Hi, this is Adi, and today I'm having a look at the DX Solar Chugokin Jet Scrander. So the Jet Scrander is an add-on accessory for the DX Solar Chugokin Amazing Z from Bandai Tamashi Nations that I showed a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a really awesome set, a little bit pricey, but it really makes the Amazing Z a whole lot better. So let's get it out of the box and have a little bit of a better look. So here you can see the Scrander on its launching platform and this is a display base that you get with the figure, more about that later, but just want to point out how beautiful it is. It's got this um, pearlescent, not really pleasant, kind of a metallic sheen to it. So I hope it's showing up in the camera but it's, it almost glows, that's how kind of nice it looks. And it's almost a spotless finish. I'm pretty sure that this is paint. Now, I think I heard someone else saying that it wasn't paint, that it was just the plastic, but mine actually has an eyelash stuck in the surface, so I'm pretty confident that this, um, this shininess is paint on the wings. I think the first thing that I'm going to show off is this little spaceship down here. You can see the little ship with the pilot on the inside. Now, I'm not a big fan of Amazing Z, so I don't know what this is supposed to be called, but the level of detail is pretty good, ranging from the little blue visor on the tiny pilot to his, he's got little yellow stripes on his red uniform. All this paintwork is pretty good, considering this is a tiny little thing, maybe about one and a half to two centimeters in size. Now, his wings fold back like that, for docking with Mazinger Z and it has the little port at the bottom for plugging into the Mazinger Z figure. Uh, I like the little turbine down there, that's pretty good. I'll give you a comparison now with the original. On the left there you can see the one that came with the DX Mazinger and on the right the one that came with the Scrander and because the Scrander's got yellow highlights this guy's got yellow highlights too. Uh, it's, they're very similar in size. This one's a little bit wider, but not quite as long. This one's a little bit thinner, but uh, longer. I like them both. They're both really cool. Just the quality is what really gets me, is that the in the West we buy little things like this that are pretty rough, but these guys are not rough. You could make a whole series of little collector's items. If they were all this quality, I'd be in, that's for sure. Now, the Scrander itself is on this platform. It looks like it pivots down here as if that would bend. It doesn't actually bend. When you assemble this, it just slots in like that. So that's not really a joint, but it looks pretty cool nonetheless. I particularly like this huge blast platform at the back for these uh, booster rockets to thrust against so that the heat doesn't wreck whatever's behind it. It's very reminiscent of that platform in the old show Thunderbirds that used to uh, rise up out of the ground. I think it was Thunderbird 2 that used to push on that, the big green one, but I always was impressed with that as a kid in Thunderbirds and seeing this on the Scrander kind of, it kind of makes my day. If you want to play at launching, it does slide along this rail, so it's got a little trolley that it goes on. And if I just, oh, I'm pulling it apart here, you can do that and launch it off. Now, you can see that little T section in there that was grasping onto the kind of I-beam. You don't have to keep this on. This very simply disconnects and you can leave that back on your display base if you don't want to have that hanging off your scrander. But nonetheless, that is pretty cool. Oh man, the new feature. I didn't know that could do that. So while I'm making the video, discovering new things, the Scrander can pivot up like that. Maybe that's for display in robot mode. Uh, I, I didn't know that it could do that. That's pretty awesome too. I like that. Cool. Now also, this tail section can flip back like that. And the point of that is to put that little control module back in. So when he joins to Amazing Art, you don't have to see that sticking out. So that's about it. For this but the real beauty of the set comes when we join this on so let's put it away but before we join the backpack on i need to take it from this standard arm configuration to this configuration with the add-on weapons so both these weapon parts come with the set that i'm showing now the scrander set and to get them on what we're going to do is just take off both halves of the standard mazinger so you can 
hang these on his uh, hanger or just put them back in the box, do whatever you want. And we grab our new arm um, component right here, split that in half, making sure the elbow's in the right direction, otherwise the arm won't bend. And we can just lock it on, as easy as that. So now he's got these two lethal looking arms. Now, again, sorry that I don't know the proper names for these. Um, as I said, I'm not a huge amazing fan, but I am a huge fan of how this looks. He could spin around. Man, that's... <laughs> super robots, what can I say? Not really a huge amount of logic to having axes on your arms, but it sure does look freaking awesome. Now, if you don't want to have all the armor on, uh, because, for example, you're showing his inner skeleton, uh, you know how all this stuff opens up. If you had him displayed like that, you can choose to do a half and half. So we get two extra blades, one for each side, and what these can do is just slot in like that. So if you want his innards showing and still have the axe on the forearm, you definitely can do that. And he's still got the same degree of posability in his arms when these are on as well. Although you wouldn't want to reach up and grab your face with that on your arm, would you? You could poke yourself in the eye. So as you could see, he just plugged into a slot and a little nub at the back, very easily connects. These two parts join together at the front and make a pretty damn solid connection that uh, I don't think is in any danger of just falling off. So given that this is an expensive set, it's pretty good that it doesn't fall off. Now, in the show, I've seen him both ways. So this is the way with the wings are down. Um, I don't particularly like them in the down configuration, but to change them around is really easy, so I'm going to do that now. Basically all it involves, actually I'm going to take these off first, I don't like dropping them, all it involves is grabbing a hold of the back and pulling the wing off and sticking it back on the other way. Couldn't be easier and it's a nice strong connection that it makes there, so again these wings they don't feel like they're in any danger of falling of their own accord. That looks fan freaking tastic. That is amazing. Look at that. He is huge with these wings on. He is really, really huge. Now, I've said this before. If you're not a fan of Mazinger, don't you don't need to even worry about that. This figure will you can be a fan of this figure without being a fan of Mazinger. And the size and quality of the execution is just it's, it's a work of art it's it's really beautiful to give some idea of how big this really is let's get the ruler so from the edge of that one all the way over to the edge of the other one it's about uh, 35 36 centimeters it's I don't know roughly 14 inches across and they are angled back a bit if you if you bend them forward let's let's just do it bend them forward let's let's really see the maximum width of this thing so the maximum width is 38 centimeters 15 inches that is really wide it's really impressive let's have a look at uh, someone standing next to him and I'll grab I'll grab the guy I always tend to grab my 
MP10, my or Hasbro version, just because he's always on display around here. So he's like, it's like a little boy compared to the DX Mazinger. For me, that's all I need. I'm happy to have that like that, but we do get more in this set. So in order to show that, I'm just going to pull off these wings and swap their sides. It might seem weird, but you'll get the point in a minute. So stand back there. Amazing. Here is the wing reverse side, and you can see it's got a very nicely done flush panel here. If you just, I, mean, I don't want to be too rough. I'm going to get my fingers in there and pull it off. So here's the reverse side of that panel, nice detail, and everything is so squeezed together, it actually has to be recessed here so that these details fit into that recess. Very nice. And as I said, I, I do really believe this is painted. Uh, just, where's that hair gone? There's definitely a hair stuck to my one. Where is it? If you look in here, oh, Jesus, dropping those freaking things. I don't know if that's showing up, but there is a, like an eyelash of some factory worker stuck in the paint here. So that surface, at least, on that panel is definitely a painted surface. On the other side, we've got all this awesome detail in here, and it's as if these wings are like fully loaded with these... Uh, and they look like throwing stars, but uh, they could be anything. I don't know what they're meant to be. But I, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of weapon. Maybe he can deploy them out of the wings. But it's really... There is, there is not even, I'm looking for a, a part where the paint has gone wrong on that detail and it's just perfect. There is not any kind of error anywhere. It's, it's, it's quite impressive and even if you don't know what it is, it's really nice to look at. So if you want, you can display him with those shown, especially if you're going to be doing it with the uh, half on, half off armor. I guess it would look pretty impressive to have the wing half on, half off as well. But that is still not all that we get with the set. We get another base. So this is a really nice base and it looks in design perfectly matching the hanger that we got with the DX Mazinger. The, the way that it's got these squares on the top panel and uh, the angles. Now the nameplate says the same thing but in this case it's a uh, stainless steel kind of nameplate. On the other one it had a little bit of a, a gold tinge to. Just like the nameplate on the hanger, it comes in a little baggie with some double-sided tape. You put two bits of tape behind that and then put it in a slot and it sticks there. Now if you look at that, that's not going to fall out. So once you've got it on, it's kind of permanent. And like this beam also comes in the set. And as it, it, it goes in and out, in one direction so you can put it on like that you don't have to have it but it really makes the set a whole lot more stable and if you're going to put it on a shelf you want stability because there's no way I'm having hundreds of dollars worth of gokin falling on the ground in order to put the figure on we want to get this pronged area and stick it in the gap between amazing Z's back and the scrander so in that little hole that's in there it's a little bit tricky to show on camera, but you get the idea. It goes up like that. So I'm just going to do that. Then stand the legs up straight so that they're touching the ground. I mean, it's actually strong enough that you don't have to put the feet on the ground. So you can see in this instance, there's nothing touching the ground. Even that uh, foot down there is not really touching the ground. I've got him totally balanced on the stand. So that's pretty good but um, I wouldn't want to leave it like this for the long term maybe if you're showing it off uh, some people coming around this is an impressive way to do it but uh, it is strong enough to achieve it but what it's really good for is planting all three supports on the ground just to keep it safe and when we do it like that it looks pretty damn good so you can see that it, it just stops him from falling over which is all you can ask for and uh, given that this is an unusually big figure. It was a kind of necessity that Bandai made some kind of display for him. And the really awesome thing about having this is, is it frees us up 
to put other things into the hangar. So my final thoughts. This grander is about $100 at BBTS. Um, it seems to be more expensive just about everywhere else that I've looked that I can easily use. So BBTS seems to be the best place to get it. Uh, I think that it's worth that $100. It's a pretty simple accessory, but the, the added value that you get really adds a lot to the Mazinger figure. So if you've got the DX Mazinger Z, I, I truly recommend getting this grander. It kind of completes it. I know a lot of people kind of moaning and bitching that why didn't Mazinger come with the stuff in this grander set and put the base, the hanger rather, as the exclusive. I don't think that was the way to go. We never would have got the combinations that we got if people had to choose to buy that hanger because um, too many people would have opted out of it and the hanger has such value in itself that I'm glad we went the way we did. I still only really have one complaint about this set and it's the dead eyes because it's got the see-through eyes that a light feature works on but the light can't permanently be turned on so it's hard to get him looking alive on a display I just wish that we had some flip-on eyes or painted eye options. But other than that, that's nothing to do with the Scrander. That's just in general. So I'm really, really happy with this, and I can highly recommend it. And I might go so far as to say that maybe this is the only Amazing Z and accessory pack you're ever going to need. I mean, you can't play with it. If you play with toys, that's probably not true. But if you just want to look at Amazing and have one, then this set is it's just perfect. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with it. Anyway, I'm Odean. This has been my video review for the DX Soul of Chugokan Scrander set for Amazing Z. Thanks for watching.